Hello. It's good to see you. Today we are going to be reading some expressions and little stories that are from all over the South, not just North Carolina, but all over the place. And they're all, all on different topics. And there are just some little short things in here, too. We're just going to read whatever we come to. Consequences. Don't let your mouth write checks that your rear end can't cash. Inaction. You'll sit a long time with your mouth wide open before a roasted chicken flies in. This one can cause problems sometimes. Putting on airs. Even if you were in high cotton, don't get above your raisin. And, um, yeah, if you're the first kid in your family to go to college, some of your family members might actually literally say this to you. (laughs) Wishful thinking. Wish in one hand, spit in the other, and see which one gets full faster. Excuses. Excuses are like backsides. Everybody's got one. I have a feeling we're not going to find any profanity in here. Revenge. Two wrongs don't make a right, but they sure do make it even. Owning up. The easiest way to eat crow is while it's still warm, because the colder it gets, the harder it is to swallow. Here's a biscuit. Facing reality. You can put your boots in the oven. That don't make them biscuits. (laughs) A light at the end of the tunnel. The country doctor arrives at a cabin with no electricity in a hollow so deep they have to pipe in the sunshine. Inside are Fester and his wife, Tweety, who's about to squeeze out their first baby. During the delivery, the doc asks Fester to hold the lantern close to Tweety so he can see. Soon out pops the infant. Fester starts to put the lantern down when the doc hollers, Wait a minute, hold that lantern back up here, Fester. There's another baby a-coming. Sure enough, Tweety delivers a second infant. Fester goes to place the lantern on the table when the good doctor yells out, Well, pick my peas. Here comes another one. (laughs) Fester is swooning from the news. Doc, he says, you reckon it's the light that's attracting them? (laughs) Oh, my God. Lies. If you pile up too many lies, the ground will be so steep you'll skin your nose climbing up them. Unnecessary risks. Don't hit a hornet's nest with a short stick. Compliments. Saying something nice makes the old feel young and the poor feel rich. Deceit. Twisting the truth is like putting perfume on a pig. Restraint. If you're outnumbered, Best keep your mouth shut or they'll tear your butt up like a tater field that's just been plowed. Adversity. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I know everybody makes it in that second group. Seeking advice. Never ask a barber if he thinks you need a haircut. (laughs) Self-help. If you want help, look to the end of your arm. Imperfection. Every dog ought to have a few fleas. Knowing whom to criticize. Never smack a man chewing tobacco. (laughs) Investing. The quickest way to double your money is to fold it over and put it back in your pocket. (laughs) Talking dirty. A high society lady was mortified when her daughter came home from college engaged to a young man with little money and no social standing. The dreaded day came when the haughty woman had to introduce her soon-to-be son-in-law to her friends. She winced as the young man talked to the snooty matrons in language that was neither grammatical nor refined. She couldn't have been more embarrassed if she had mistakenly served her guests moonshine instead of sweet tea. The eyebrows of the hoity-toity were arched so high you could drive a team of horses through them. Rather than swoon in shame, the lady gritted her teeth and said to her daughter, who was still gazing starry-eyed at her ne'er-do-well darling, Why don't you and your young man slip out to the kitchen and bring us some more cake? 
As the door closed behind him, Mrs. High and Mighty lowered her voice to her friends and said, Well, you know, even the most fertile lands must be manured from time to time. <laughs> God. Yikes. <laughs> Inaction. You'll never plow the field by turning it over in your mind. Guilt. It's always the dirty dog that howls the loudest. Knowledge. Live and learn or die and know it all. Excuses. Excuses are like armpits. Everyone has got at least two and they both stink. The company you keep. If you lie down with dogs, you get up with fleas. Ill-gotten gains? Honey is sweet, but don't lick it off the briar. Fake compliments. Be careful you don't get too sugary or you'll drown in your own sweet tea. Advice. Don't give cherries to pigs or advice to fools. Wrong impression. You can't tell the size of the turnips by looking at their tops. Anxiety. Worry and give small things big shadows. Opportunity. When life gives you scraps, make a quilt. Unwanted relatives. Every garden has some weeds. Accountability. Don't blame the cow when the milk goes sour. Average Joe. We can't all be big shots. Someone has to sit on the curve and wave at them as they go by. Unworkable situation. There are times when the big dog won't hunt. Unintended consequences. Everyone loves the deer till it eats from the garden. Ego. Some people are so full of themselves, you'd like to buy them for what they're worth and sell them for what they think they're worth. <laughs> Telling tales out of school. At Sunday dinner, Grandma Melba asked her grandson Buster what he learned in Sunday school that morning. He eagerly told the biblical story of how Moses led the Israelites to safety from the pursuing soldiers of the Pharaoh's army. Buster said that Moses used a golden megaphone to warn all the Israelites to flee Egypt. Then, according to the lad, Moses hired engineers and real fast workers to build a bridge over the Red Sea. Once all the Israelites crossed over safely, Moses blew up the bridge, killing all the Egyptian soldiers who were following him. Grandma Melba nearly fell out of her rocker after hearing the tall tale. She leaned over and asked the boy, is that how your teacher told the story? Not exactly, Buster replied, but you'd never believe me if I told it her way. <laughs> Impossible task. You can't make chicken salad out of chicken feathers. I heard that a different way. <laughs> State of mind. A good attitude is like kudzu. It spreads. <laughs> Bar fight. Picking a bar fight is like going bear hunting with a switch. <laughs> Wrong assumption. Just cause a chicken has wings don't mean it can fly. Liars. Liars, the figures don't lie, but liars figure. Needless worry. Most problems ain't no bigger than the little end of nothing whittled down to a fine point. first impression. You can't tell much about a chicken pot pie till you cut through the crust. Exaggeration. Don't let your mouth overload your butt. Criticism. Never insult an alligator till you've crossed the creek. Family problems. Every man needs to skin his own skunk. Making matters worse. When bugs throw a party, they don't invite the chickens. Sooner better than later. Great Granddaddy Floyd turned 100 the other day, and all his kin gathered to toss him a mighty fine shindig. Floyd, who was all spiffied up, was still sharp as a tack and had all his acorns and all his teeth. 
One of his great-grandsons, the first to graduate from college, asked him, Granddaddy, if you had to live your life over, would you make the same mistakes again? Taking a deep drag off his corn cob pipe, Flo uh, Floyd replied, I surely would, only I'd start a whole lot sooner. <laughs> Sometimes you get, and sometimes you get got. Feeling good. I feel finer than a frog's hair split four ways and sanded twice. If you're in a really good mood, you might say, if I felt any better, I'd be two people. Problems. I got more problems than I can say grace over. If your friend has a problem that she's trying to ignore, you might say, if you got a rooster, he's going to crow blessed. I'm so blessed I could step in manure and come out smelling like a rose. If you're referring to a friend who came into wealth, you might say, now there goes a man who broke out in money. <laughs> Ain't no accidents. A wet behind the ears insurance agent drives out to the farm of old man Grover, hoping to get him to renew his health policy. The young fellow finds Grover tuning up his tractor but the farmer stops what he's doing to answer a few questions. Have you ever had any accidents in the past? Have you had any accidents in the past year? The agent asks. Nope, Grover replies. Although that mule over yonder kicked in two of my ribs a while back, and last spring a rattlesnake bit my ankle. That's terrible, says the new agent. Wouldn't you call those accidents? No, the farmer replies. I pretty much thought they did it on purpose. <laughs> Ooh. Hard times. I've fallen on stony ground. If you want to offer hope to someone who's down in the dumps, you might say, we've all seen sicker dogs that got well. Wealth. He's so rich, he buys a new boat every time his old one gets wet. <laughs> if you're well off, you might want to boast, I'm richer than clabbered cream. Poverty. I'm too poor to paint and too proud to whitewash. If you're always broke, you might say, money thinks I'm dead. <laughs> Luck. Even a blind squirrel finds an acorn now and then. If you're talking about the luck of the Irish, you might say, he's so lucky he could sit on a fence and the birds would feed him. Lip service. Old Codger Roscoe was sitting on the bench in front of the general store, whittling a G-Hall whimmy diddle when his friend Virgil arrived in a mule-driven wagon. I have a whimmy diddle. My dad made me one. I'll show it to you sometime. Virgil jumped off the wagon, tied the mule to a post, and then walked to the back of the animal, lifted up its tail, and planted a kiss smack dab on its rear end. Roscoe dropped his whittling knife and said, Did I see what I just saw? Virgil nodded and said, I reckon you did. Why would you do a darn fool thing like that? I have a powerful bad case of chapped lips. And what did you and what you did just cures them? Nope, said Virgil, but it keeps me from licking them. <laughs> Poverty. I don't have a pot to pee in nor a window to throw it out of. If you're flat broke, you might say, my piggy bank is as useful as an ashtray on a motorcycle. <laughs> I've never heard that. Good fortune. I'm living on the lucky side of the road. When things are going well financially, you might say, I'm keeping my smokehouse greasy. Hard times. I'm so unlucky, I wouldn't hit water if I fell out of a boat. If you're talking about someone who's a little worse for wear, you might say, Looks like he's on the back side of hard times. Down in the dumps. Oki was madder than a wet hen as he called over his four sons and yelled, Which one of you gall darn sprouts pushed the outhouse in the river? No one said a word, so Oki calmed down and said, Years ago, when George Washington was a boy, he cut down a cherry tree. His pa asked him, George, did you chop down the cherry tree? And George told him, I cannot tell a lie. Yes, I did. His pa didn't punish him because he told the truth. So I ask you once again, who pushed the outhouse in the river? 
His youngest son stepped forward and confessed, It was me, Pa. Oki threw him over his knee and wailed the daylights out of him. The little boy looked at Oki through tear-filled eyes and whined. You said George Washington wasn't punished for confessing he chopped down the cherry tree. That's true, said Oki, but when that happened, his pa wasn't sitting in the tree. Happy days. If times get any better, I'll have to hire somebody to help me enjoy them. If you're feeling extremely joyous, you might say, I'm as happy as a calf in a clover. Life. One day you're drinking wine, the next day you're picking grapes. If someone's life took a turn for the worse, you might say, One day you're the peacock, the next day you're the feather duster. Poverty. I'm so poor I had to fry up my nest egg. If you came from a poverty-stricken childhood, you might say, We were so poor, my brother and I had to ride double on our stick horse. <laughs> Loyal follower. Junior went up to his pop and announced, Pa, I'm leaving the hills to look for adventure, excitement, and beautiful women. Junior went into his room and packed his meager belongings. As he turned to leave, his pop blocked the doorway, so Junior said, Don't try to stop me, Pa. I'm on my way. Holding up his own suitcase, his pop replied, Who's trying to stop you? I'm going with you. <laughs> Ups and downs. The sun don't shine on the same dog all the time. If you want to inject a little positivism into a bleak situation, you might say, even a barrel apple, tr a barren apple tree gives you some shade. Short of cash. Though I've said this, there's too much month left at the end of the money. <laughs> if you're in a bad financial financial situation, you might say, I'm so broke I'd have to borrow money to buy a drink of water. Taking chances. Sometimes you're the windshield and sometimes you're the bug. To a gambling man, you might say, sometimes you eat the bear and sometimes the bear eats you. Luck. He attracts luck like a magnet does a horseshoe. Talking about a guy who always comes out ahead, you might say, he can slide down a hundred foot locust tree with a wildcat under each arm and never get a scratch. Financially challenged. I'm as poor as gully dirt. If a friend asks to borrow money from you and you don't have any to lend, you might say, you went to a goat's house looking for wool. Problems. Every path has its puddles. If you're facing several problems at once, you might say, I'm in a bad row of stumps. Dilemma. I'm caught, I'm caught where the wool is short. If you're trying to figure out which of your problems to deal with first, you might think there ain't no difference between a hornet and a yellow jacket when they're both buzzing in your pants. <laughs> Bearing down. Jethro took his wife and mother-in-law hunting way back in the hills. They spread out looking for game. About sundown, Jethro found his wife and the two went to collect his mother-in-law. All of a sudden, they heard the old lady screaming like a cat with its tail caught in the barn door. They rushed toward the sound, rounded a clearing, and came upon a chilling sight. The mother-in-law was backed up against a tree, face to jowls with a large, menacing bear. Jethro, what are we going to do? wailed his wife. Be still, he told her. That bear got himself into this mess. Let him get himself out of it. Don't spoil Saturday night by counting the time to Monday morning. Great fun. I'm having more fun than a lost dog in a meat market. If you've had a great time clogging at the church dance, you might say, I sure tore up the pea patch. Drinking. You're so drunk you couldn't hit a bull in the butt with a bass fiddle. <laughs> a bait. Uh, sorry, a bass fiddle. Let me read that again. You're so drunk you couldn't hit a bull in the butt with a bass fiddle. If someone had too much to drink over the weekend, you might say, you look like you've been chasing cars. <laughs> Chilling out. I feel so lazy on the weekends that I have to speed up just to stop. 
If you want to let things come as they may, you might say, charge it to the dust and let the rain settle it. Party time. You look like you've been sacking wild cats and plum run out of sacks. In response to someone who asks you to join a wild party, you might say, I'll jump on that like a duck on a June bug. <laughs> long hours. I'm working from can to can't. <laughs> if you're going to have a long day at work, you might say, it'll be dark 30 before I get home. Work experience. The new broom might sweep clean, but the old broom knows the corners. If you're touting your work experience, you might say, the older the fiddle, the sweeter the tune. The boss, he's the big cheese in this trap. If you're warning your coworker against leaving his job early without the boss finding out, you might say, that's like trying to slip sun up past a rooster. Bait and switch. A Yankee was fishing off the coast of Florida when his boat capsized. He wouldn't swim to shore because he feared alligators, so he clung to the hole. When he spotted a cracker named Hump fishing off the dock, the Yankee shouted to him, Are there any alligators in these waters? Hump replied, Nope, there ain't been any in years. The Yankee heaved a sigh of relief, and believing it was safe, he started swimming for shore. About halfway there, he asked the guy, how come there aren't any alligators here? Answered Hump. The sharks ate them all. <laughs> Ooh, busy. I'm as busy as a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest. When someone asks if you're busy, you might say, There ain't no flies on me. <laughs> Lazy worker. He'll never drown in his own sweat. If you're referring to a nice co-worker who is somewhat lazy, you might say, He's a good dog, but he don't like to hunt much. <laughs> Exhaustion. I'm so dog tired my butt's dragging out my tracks. If your body is telling you that you can't work anymore, you might say, just throw me in the chair and call me a sack of taters. Lazy worker. He's always looking for sundown and payday. If accused of being lazy, you might say, I'm not afraid of work. I can lay down right beside it and go to sleep. Difficult work. A hard job is like 40 miles of rough road. When facing a difficult task, you might say, that ain't no hill for a climber. Overwhelmed. I'm so far over my head, I have to look up to see bottom. When you're swamped with work and can't seem to get ahead, you might say, I feel like a rubber-nosed woodpecker in a petrified forest. <laughs> Gone fishing. Two country boys are at their special fishing hole when all of a sudden, the game warden jumps out of the bushes. One of the boys throws down his rod and hightails it through the woods like a fox on fire, but the warden is hot on his heels. About a half mile later, the boy stops and stoops over with his hands on his thighs to catch his breath. The game warden finally collars him and says, Let's see your fishing license, boy. The lad pulls out his wallet and shows the warden a valid fishing license. Well, son, says the warden, you must be dumb as a box of rocks. You have a license, so you didn't have to run away from me. I reckon not, sir, replies the boy, but my friend back yonder, well, he don't have one. <laughs> Management. They think they know everything, but they're as lost as geese in a snowstorm. If you're hassled at work by management, you might say, I'm as harried as a stump-tailed cow during fly season. <laughs> told you so. You don't want to do any business with that Jake, Elmer told his friend Trace. He's slicker than a leaky oil pan. Heck, he could steal the buttons off the long johns you're wearing and sell them back to you as rare coins. Ain't that the gospel, said Elmer. Why, just last week, I was over at Jake's place, spitting nails and carrying on. I hollered, Jake, you no good snake in the grass. That mule you sold me is half near blind. And Jake says, I told you before you bought him, he was a fine mule, but he didn't look good. <laughs> I 
I will do these last two pages and then that's it. Bad boss. He's been chased through the forest of mean and hit every tree trunk. If you're warning your co-worker not to cross the boss, you might say he'll get mad enough to run a stray dog off a meat wagon. Overworked. I'm so overworked, I'm busier in a funeral home fan in August. When work is piling up, you might say, I've got more tobacco than I can chew. Cheapskate boss. He's so tight that when he blinks, his toes curl. <laughs> if you're complaining that your stingy boss won't give you a raise, you might say, he's tighter than bark on a tree. Doing your share. Them that don't pluck, don't get chicken. Referring to a co-worker who doesn't pull his weight, you might say they call him blister because he don't show up till the work is done. <laughs> that's a good one. I've never heard that. But that's just a little sample of some southern sayings. I have not heard most of these. Um, so, But I just thought I would share. Somebody asked for this a long time ago and I happened to stumble across this. And I just wanted to share some of these with you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you again soon.